that's the screen you're looking for. So you're going to use the website that I believe, Dan, are you sending them? Uh, we could actually put it right in the chat here. Um, let me get that. I'll send it over to Mike. And uh, Mike, if you could just share it with the group, that's fine. So you're going to use your email and the password that was provided, which I believe is the WellCare123 with a capital W. And so you're going to... Sorry, Jeanette. So that email okay. is going to be whatever email you've been doing with using with WellCare on your contracting. So if you contracted a year ago or six months ago or just a couple of days ago, whatever it may be, whatever email you email address you got your contracting in is going to be the one that you have. I know these days usually people have two to seven different email addresses, and that always comes up some as some point of challenge. But it's going to be the contracting one. When you log in the first time, it will prompt you to change your password. Okay. So on the Ascend platform, there is something as a blue button. Now the blue button would take the client right to medicare.gov. But since we are going to enroll them now, we can just skip that portion and you're going to click no i prefer to enter my information manually okay. we're going to skip through this because you already went through the medications with the member As I said, this can all be done through the uh, Ascend platform. I just personally like having the phone in the hand. I think that app is, those, the app I shared, uh, Mike shared for you guys, it's just so much more fluent that it's just easier to use. Dan, it, it, on the platform, it doesn't necessarily show you if it's a network yet. Okay. So that's probably something they're shooting for for October 1. So perfect. Okay. Now you are able to do the extra help eligibility check on this platform. After you put in the zip code and you skip over to number five, which is our plans, it'll ask you about the eligibility. And if you want to check the eligibility, then you click yes. You are also able to skip this and click no. Okay, if you're checking eligibility, it'll bring you to the screen. You need to fill out the member's first name, last name, date of birth, Medicare number, and either the Medicaid number or their social security number. It will not allow you to check the eligibility without one or the other. Okay, then you would check status. Right. It does give you the option to look at plans on this platform as well. So you would choose which plan you are enrolling them into and hit apply now. You are also able to view the details of the plan on this platform. And it'll come up with a summary of benefits. You can click apply now or you can go back to quotes. It also gives you the option to compare plans as well. Okay. Once you put in the zip code, you are able to skip steps two, three, and four and just go right to our plans, which is number five. Once you click number five, it's going to bring you to the eligibility check. And then once you do the eligibility check, it'll bring you to the information screen of the beneficiary. You're going to fill out the first name, last name, gender, date of birth, email address if they have it, phone number, and alternate phone number. If you see on the bottom here, 
you have the option to save the application. There is also a button for send for signature. As a telesales agent, we do not need to use this. This is for agents that are working out in the field. They are able to get a signature that way. You would click next. Then it asks for the address. You will fill out the address. If a mailing address is different than the permanent resident address, then you're going to click the button here and check it off so that it gives you the spaces to write the mailing address. Then you would click next. Emergency contact, you would fill in the emergency contact information here. Once you start typing, you would need to fill out all of these boxes and then click next. This is where it is asking you for the doctor. Now for this platform, they are asking for you to put in the doctor's NPI number. There is a provider lookup where you are able to find the doctor's NPI number, but you have to make sure that once you find the doctor on the provider lookup that you add the doctor if, and save it or if not, it won't generate the doctor into these boxes. It does ask if the member is a current patient as well. And you're going to hit next. If you do the eligibility check, the Medicare number and the Part A and B effective dates will automatically be filled in. If you do not do the eligibility check, you can fill out the Medicare number, Part A and B effective dates, and then hit verify. It'll verify the Medicare number right there. And then you would hit next. This is where it's asking for the election period. For AEP, I believe there will be the option that is the open enrollment period. They do have the option, I am new, newly eligible for Medicare, and this is my first entitlement to enrollment. I am newly eligible for Medicare Part D, prescription drug coverage, or my situation falls under one of the special election period circumstances. And once you click the mod, it down a list of special election periods. Then you would choose one and hit next. Sorry, for AEP, which one do we choose? You're going to wind up doing my, probably my situation falls under one of the special election period circumstances, and it'll give you the option to, that it was in AEP, that you're in the open enrollment period. There, there actually may also be an option, because it's an electronic platform, it may actually unlock on October 15th for you to actually put the, uh, you know, the application as a checkbox then and it may just then lock up again, again on December 7th, but we'll see that and how that works out. Okay, this is where it is asking you the health questions, the ESRD question, the long-term care facility, Medicaid. If, you, if the member does have Medicaid, you are going to have to put in the Medicaid number on this screen. Do you or your spouse work? It also asks for the language preference and if the member wants their information in large print. Large print down here. Then you would click next. This is where they have all the disclosures that we do have on the enrollment script as well. And this is where you would put in the applicant's name for the signature and the date. It also asks if they're enrolling for themselves or on behalf of someone else. If they are the POA or authorized rep, you would click the bottom one and it'll show, it'll have you fill out the information of the power of attorney or um, authorized rep. Then you would click next.
This is where you pick the payment plan and you have the electronic funds transfer, deduction from monthly benefits or send me a coupon book. Okay, and you would choose one of those and then click next. And this is where you are able to review the application. If there's any information that is incorrect, you are able to edit that portion. And if everything is correct, you would hit apply now. And this is where you get your confirmation number, which would be in this in bold over here on the right side. And then you would be able to print the application and save it as a PDF and then email it to myself and Dan. Okay. And that's pretty much the enrollment. Okay, great. Any thoughts, any questions about how the platform will, uh, will operate? So to have access to this, there was a, a link, I guess, at the front. Um, can you email that to us or, or? That link is actually right in the chat. And that link probably won't work if you haven't done the five steps that we kind of discussed yesterday, uh, making sure that you're up with them up on the screen again. Uh, in order for the, in order for that link to work, share my screen. Oh, I see the well I got it. Yeah, yeah. That's going to have to stop sharing her screen in order for you to. Hold on. Is that one? It? Oh, go ahead. In order, in order for those that, that link to work, these five steps must must uh, have happened. Uh, contracted with WellCare, completed a certification, completed WellCare U, or the you know the, the, set, the certification for 2021. WellCare's university is what they called it in 2020. Uh, you've gotten a ready to sell, and then you're at the point of fifth step where you're creating a telesales login. Great. Right. Yeah, I just want to mention one more thing. Sure. Just make sure that you are logged in and your email address or your name is on the top left hand side. If your name is not on there, then you uh, you will not get credit for that application. Would you repeat that? Sorry about that. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Janelle, why don't you take the screen back and you show us there for some reason. Okay. It's just not that show. Hold on. I think the link may have just timed out because I had it open for so long. So Ascend does time you out. You want to make sure that your name is in this area or your email address, however it is logged in. If your name does not appear here and you submit an application, you will not get credit for that application. So if your name is not there, what should in we this do? Area. So, so for argument's sake, let's just say, just like in your, in your bank account or your, your credit card or your mortgage website, whatever whatever one you go to pay any of those bills are, where if you were to open up the site, sit on it for five to 10 minutes, step away, go grab a cup of coffee or a snack in the kitchen, come back and there's the notification that says, you are about to log out for 10 to 15 minutes of inactivity, uh, click here to stay logged in, what have you, a message like that pops up. And if you ignore that message and right where it has that name there, M. Betaniglia, whatever it may be, um, Ben Nye's, whatever it is, if that disappears and there's nothing there, you're not entering it into the credit for you specifically. You're just entering it into the welfare system and you, will get, uh, you won't get the credit for it. However, it's just like your bank account. It's just like your mortgage company. It tells you what's happening. So as long as you're not just sitting there leaving it actively open and you're ignoring that message, there, there should not be a problem with this. Since we rolled this out about a month ago, maybe maybe a little less, three three to four weeks ago, we haven't had any of the challenges. I haven't even heard the phone ring about this. It's just something that we like to share just so that you are aware. Uh, is there a test site or a sandbox where we can practice? 
that there are companies that have that. Our mutual is great at having that. Wellcare does not have one of those. Um, one of the things that we practice, we could share this PDF with you though. Um, Jeanette, I think you have this PDF. We could probably save it and get it posted on the Telesales site and you could just walk through all the sides. We'll, we'll probably make it up on the okay. site where it has one of these important resources. Okay, thanks. No worries. What, one, thing I, one thing I just want to point out is that at this point, there's nobody Nobody on the call is ready to get that login for the telesales side. Um, whether it whether it's that the steps were not done or the contracting department at Wellcare uh, is behind, uh, whatever the reason is at this point, nobody is actually set to have that login into this. Hoping by next week, that's a totally different story. And I would just confirm that we are um, updated. Yesterday's uh, training day is going to be up online on the div.com slash telesales, uh, ready for you by within a couple hours or so. She's working on it as we speak. And this recording will also be there 